Hey defenders, welcome back to our channel. So today we are going to be talking about class D IP addresses. <laughs> okay, let me talk about this. So when we know about IP addresses, we uh, we usually know about class A, class B and class C IP addresses. What is class A IP address? So any IP address can be broadly classified into a simple syntax a.b.c.d and a, the value of a, b, c and d can vary from 0 to 255. What is class A? Class A meaning the first octet which is A will range anywhere from 0 to 126, right? Class B is will range anywhere from 128 to 191, right? Class C will range anywhere from 192 to 223, right? So these are the most popular class A, class B and class C IP addresses that we often use. Let me give you a briefer on the major use of each of these classes. Class A is typically used for large networks, very few networks each with many hosts, usually for huge organizations like IBM or organizations like ISP providers etc usually have class A networks, right? Because they have to distribute IP addresses for a large quantity of users. Class B. Class B is usually used for medium sized network, right? For example, these are networks fewer to medium number of hosts. Usually companies use them because they may have very less to a large number of IP addresses. When I say large, it's not as large as class A. So it's a intermediate. Class C IP addresses are for small networks, typically for computers ranging from say 0 to 300. So that is the range of uh, computers that could be accommodated when you use a class C. But there is a technique where you can do subnetting, supernetting, etc. to have multiple accommodated on a class C network itself. But let's not go there right now. But the idea is to do this. But we are not often clear about what is class D and class E of IP addresses, right? Class E is usually for not for internet routing. It is completely for research. It's majorly for astro research and etc. So let's not get into that. What is class D IP addresses used for? Class D IP address is typically used for multicasting. So for example, say I do a live streaming, right? This live streaming uh, it, the data of this live streaming video data is fed to a router. From that router, it's fed to another router. From that router, it's fed to a switch. From that switch, it's sent to multiple viewing devices, which means one device going through a router, another router, another switch can actually have demultiplexing happening, right? And what happens is one too many. So usually if you watch uh, cricket matches or uh, football matches etc you understand that there is something called multiplexing happening where one source of output video is made into so many versions with different advertisements and you know different channels and so many companies incorporating that particular feed along with their own data that is called multicasting and when I say multicasting, it is one too many. And this is achieved using the class D. And it's really important we know it is class D that is helping you do the multicasting, right? So in case you think this information is useful to you, or if you think someone else would love to hear this content, consider sharing and subscribing. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech insights on cybersecurity.